Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. And today I have something pretty damn exciting for you. Um, I'm very excited about this. I hope you guys are too. This is one of those knives that is so awesome. It, it, it pulls the skin back and tightens the wrinkles out, if you know what I mean. What we're looking at here is the new Lycodon by GDS Knives, which is Seth Taylor. Now, if that name rings a bell, and hopefully it does, it's because you saw me do a video on my Vipera just a few months ago. And uh, Seth did a great job on this. It's a really good looking, very sleek design. And not really like anybody else's knives. This, however, is on a whole different level because of the materials that are used and the finish work that's been done on it. Once again, uh, just to get it out of the way, uh, I am wearing the white glove once again so that you guys don't have to see the nasty uh, healing of the burns on my wrist. Don't want to subject you to that. Now, let's get a couple of nice close-up looks at this before I get fingerprints all over the zirconium so that you can get a nice, fresh perspective on what this knife is. absolutely flawless finish work on this just just gorgeous so you have the zirconium show scale look at that super thick blade stock oh 200 thou thick my goodness there is the Timascus pocket clip against the very, very, very dark bee blasted titanium. You'll notice once again, just like on the Zerk side, you've got the Timascus pivot collar. And then we have a Timascus floating backspacer. I love the angles on the knife. I love the, the whole way that it feels and presents itself. But really, for me, it's all about this blade. Look at the amazing finish on this blade. It's just magnificent. Beautiful hand rub satin. It's really hard to get the camera to focus on this for you to see all of the details because it is so reflective. So you've got a nice top swedge on here, very prominent flat. The bevels are beautifully done. I mean, this is just just amazing gorgeous gorgeous work all the way around so let's lay it down we'll talk about the specifics of the knife <clears throat> so what we're looking at is a brand new model from Seth um, he designed the Lycodon to target individuals that have a tighter budget you know when you go back to the Vipera it was a it was a pretty expensive knife and I'm sure a lot more people would have liked to have gotten it, but the price was a little bit high. When you start with the base model of the Lycodon, you're starting at 600 bucks. Now, there's going to be a lot of options, and mine is optioned out pretty much to the max. Um, and when you look at the lowest price version, you do not get the hidden stop pin. Uh, you don't get the hidden hardware clip, which I didn't either. I've got the standard uh, hardware on my clip. Uh, you would not get pivot collars, and there was one other thing, oh, and you would not get a lock bar insert, which you'll notice um, I do not have on mine either. So there's still two more options that I could have gotten on mine. I love the whole way this knife came out, particularly the new blade profile. It's got a very long and very useful belly. But it still has a very aggressive kind of, I'm going to kick your ass kind of look. So if you start out with the base of 600 bucks, you, uh, with mine added zirconium, that added 85 bucks. The pivot collars added 40 bucks. Uh, adding on the fact that their Timascus adds another $50. So this is just about 800 bucks, which still, with everything that's on it, and I've shown you several knives over the course of the last five years where I have had knives made with zirconium and Timascus uh, and, and they were tremendously more, $12, $13, $15, $1,800 and up. 
this is a fantastic value for what it is. And again, remember, this is a full custom knife. This is not a mid-tech. This is not a production. These are all handmade customs. For the overall specs, you're looking at the overall length of this knife at 9 inches. It is not a small knife. And also, given the fact that I've got zirconium, it adds a bit of weight to it. So this is not a lightweight knife. Uh, if you did carbon fiber or even just titanium, it would be lighter weight than mine is. So do keep that in mind. So if you want to EDC this knife, it might be heavy in its current iteration. The blade length is 4 inches, so you've got a very large, very useful blade on there. Blade thickness, look at that, 200 thousandths of an inch thick. Very, very impressive blade stock on this. And the blade is CPM 154 with a Rockwell hardness of 60 HRC. I'm going to tell you this right now, out of the gate, there are a lot of knives that have come through my hands, whether it was a guest blade that I borrowed from someone else, handling uh, knives at shows, handling friends' knives, knives that I've had built for myself, whatever the case may be, I've had a lot of knives run through my hands. This one is one of the most impressive. Just the way that it feels in the hand, the super slick finish work, I mean, I've, I've looked and I've looked and I've looked, and I have not found a single imperfection anywhere on this knife. Every teeny tiny little detail has been taken care of. All the finish work is flawless. And the action feels fantastic. This is an absolutely perfect detent. It's sharp and it's strong, but it's not so hard that you feel like you're going to uh, break a finger when you're trying to open it. If there was one thing that I would change on this, you know, there's always pros and cons. Uh, I would dehorn this a little bit. The, uh, the edges, the corners, I should say, are just a little bit sharp. That's it. He even added jimping on the flipper tab, which, if you remember, was the uh, big takeaway I had from this one, that it didn't have the jimping, and my finger sometimes wants to uh, slide off of it. This <laughs> is... I don't like to use the word perfect. I really don't, but this is just about as perfect as I could ever want a knife to be. Personal preferences... I wanted these particular materials, so that made it pretty hefty. You may choose different materials, and that, if, if you felt this was too heavy, it would take that away. I just like everything about it. It's just beautifully done. It's, it's almost a work of art, but it doesn't really take itself away from being a, a, a wonderfully acceptable EDC knife. Again, it's a bit on the big side. A lot of people will not EDC a 4-inch blade, a 9-inch overall knife, and I understand that. That's totally fine, especially at the thickness this is at. However, for those of us that do like to carry a larger knife from time to time, this is going to be perfectly acceptable. And one of the things that I like about his designs, and you'll see some similarities here, is the fact that everything's slim this way. It's not very tall, and that means it falls into the pocket and it's, it feels very non-obtrusive. You don't really know that it's there. So I've got something that's slim and sleek and easy to carry. And man, when you open this thing, listen, I'm, I'm going to put this closer to the mic so you're not really going to see the knife. But I want you to hear the thwack as this thing opens up. We'll do that one more time. It's such a satisfying sound. I'm a big stickler on detents. This detent is perfect. I'm a stickler on lockup. The lockup, while early, is perfect. There's no movement in any direction. The pivot work is gorgeous. The little detail work that's been done here is just beautiful. Even without the Timascus pivot collars, you've got a really nicely... Uh, nicely designed and nicely executed custom made pivot. Everything on this is just perfect. Look how the light is catching 
this very tiny little bevel that he's put into the edge of the frame and that he's only done from here to here. Everything on this is well thought out, well executed. Nice floating backspacer. Look at the space in there and look how perfect it is. I, I honestly, I, I couldn't I couldn't make any changes to this myself to make this any better. Uh, he's also decided to put his logo inside of the frame to leave the blade as sterile as possible. Nice clean edge on there as well. By the way, this is really, really sharp. I almost sliced the living shit out of myself when I first got it. Look at the finish work on that zirconium. Just gorgeous. All these small little micro bevels. Beautifully executed. And this is what happens when you're related to uh, an art knife maker. You're going to pay attention to the small details. You're going to be very, very careful with expensive materials. And you're going to come out with something that is stellar. And that's exactly what Seth has done here. I really enjoyed the process of uh, Seth making this knife and uh, you know us going back and forth in text messages and talking about the different material options and getting work in progress pictures and seeing as this was coming to life. Uh, it was a really, really nice experience and something that if you've never worked closely with a custom knife maker, uh, it's something that you'll get a really big kick out of. Uh, you'll really enjoy that process. You feel like you're a part of it. And you know what? That's part of what makes custom knives so great. This really is a people industry. Uh, you're really going to have a connection with your customers and you as a customer with your maker. And every knife that you get that's custom made for you is, is exactly that. Even if another one is made just like this for someone else, I got to experience this as it was being made and through the communications with Seth as it was being built and choosing the materials and uh, seeing them come to life individually and to see the final product I really am blown away for this small amount of money again uh, I always have to say this whenever I mention that no if you're buying knives at Walmart for fifty dollars and that's your budget this is not a small amount of money I get that you're not who I'm talking to and you are not Seth's customer base. For those that buy high-end custom knives, this is a good value because a knife like this would typically be $1,200 and up by almost anybody I can think of. I have paid that much from other makers. I think the closest I've come to this, Les Voorhees, uh, I bought, I, oh God, what was that, a Model 15? I am so sorry that I forget. That was about three years ago. Um, that was titanium and zirconium and uh, very, very similar in the overall materials that were used. And I think that was still a th either 1000 or 1100 So I have a lot of experience with having knives built for me with similar materials and similar finishes. Um, although this is one of the very few times that I've had such a high luster on a hand rub satin. Usually hand rub satins, you know, it'd be 600, maybe 800. This has got to be 1200, 1500 grit. It is really, really beautifully executed. High degree of reflectivity, yet you can still, still see the striations in the steel from each pass each swipe that he made and you'll notice how crisp the lines still are between the flats and the bevels so it didn't get rounded off through that hand rub satin process uh, which is very 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 tricky to do so major respect to Seth for pulling this off I could not possibly be happier I've been carrying this knife since I got it and it's gonna end up going in the pocket a lot I'm really I'm more attached to this knife, I think, than many other knives that I've gotten in the past year. And I really can't put my finger on it, to be honest. It is beautiful. The finish work, the fitting, everything is, is as flawless as can be. But I've owned a lot of knives that were near flawless. There's something special about this knife. There's something special about the way it, it fits in my hand. The thickness, even though it's a very sleek knife, 
and the overall presence of it. It's that whole combination of everything all together in this one knife that speaks to me as an individual, as a collector, as a user, and also as a knife maker. I pay a lot of attention now to finish work and to how people are grinding their bevels. And I am a lot more aware of teeny tiny little mistakes. And this is just about as perfect as you could expect. So to get it for about 800 bucks, to get a base model starting at 600 bucks, this is one of those times that, you know, even though I've said I'm not really doing reviews anymore, I'm doing more of just presentations. This is one of those times I'm going to tell you, uh, do what you can to get on Seth's list, to get one of these knives in your collection. And I promise you, nothing in this video is overblown or overhyped. When you get it, it will be nicer than what I'm describing. You will not be disappointed. And that's about the highest praise I can possibly give any knife or any knife maker. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to end this video again. Uh, once again, please support my Patreon. Uh, I'll have the links in the video here and in the description. And that allows me to do stuff like this, to pay, uh, you know, for expensive knives to come out here and, and share with everybody. Um, they don't just fall out of the sky. That's just the way it is. So uh, with YouTube demonetizing us left and right and not allowing us to even make a couple of pennies off the videos that we upload, a lot of us now are very, very much relying on those of you that are supporting us through Patreon. And until next time, I'll see you on the next video.